I have recently graduated my sophomore year at the British Management University and so far I have taken the IELTS exam seven times so uh, basically my let's say uh, dreams to study abroad right uh, were cut short applied for the job right I mean we had an interview with the uh, head of uh, various to be honest I have dropped out of my university some people like think that to get 8 or above in IELTS, you gotta be genius, but is that actually true? What do you think? Ah, oh, well, that's a nice question, actually. The position of the author is clear or not, and why? For example, if it's clear, why? Write it down. Yeah, that's gonna be a lot of hard work, that's gonna be too demanding, right? But it pays off, believe me. Because I did the same uh, in the pre assignment You've taught so many students, and what are some of the biggest challenges that students have? Well, probably the biggest one is consider the amount of money they have been investing in your education, right? Um, from the very beginning of your life, right? Can you imagine that? You have your hand, you have your eye, right? That is, let's say, that can see, right? You have your ear that can hear, right? So you have your mouth, right? that you can speak, right? So basically, there is no, let's say, excuse for you uh, to not study. A professional IELTS instructor with an IELTS score of 8.5 exposes how to prepare for IELTS effectively, what mistakes to avoid, what he learned from taking IELTS seven times. Most importantly, he is driven by the desire to give back to his community by teaching other students in Everest, which is based in Tashkent. Hello, welcome to the podcast. How are you? Great, thanks. What about you? Thanks for taking the time to hop on. And it's so amazing to have you in our today's interview. So uh, can you introduce yourself for people who might not know who you are? Just a quick intro about yourself. Yeah, okay. Okay, um, well, my full name is Azamat Dormarov, and currently I am employed at the Everest Education Center, right? Uh, that is based in Tashkent. And I am uh, I have recently graduated my sophomore year at the British Management University. And so far I have taken the IELTS exam seven times, and my last attempt was 8.5, so the very first one was um, seven back in 2020 in August. So um, what else? Well, um, well, I'm I was born act, um, in Sirdaria region, right? I'm originally from Sirdaria. And what else? Uh, I, I think that's enough, right? Yeah, that's enough. So, uh, what led, uh, like, what led to choose uh, this career? Like, how did life lead you to this point? Um, well, uh, everything, let's say, that has happened in my life, right, is quite interesting when it comes to my career, when it comes to my, let's say, job right now, right? So, um, well, basically, uh, I have studied at Alvayu, and that's basically Academic Lyceum and the Westminster International University in Tashin, right? And um, when I was graduating uh, in 2021, I guess, right? I was offered the full scholarship to the University uh, of Inha, that is based in Korea. But unfortunately, because of the global lockdown, right? Uh, my parents didn't allow me to go to there on my own, right? And so uh, basically my, let's say, uh, dreams to study abroad, right? Uh, were cut short. And then uh, I have had to, let's say, um, apply for the local universities, right? So basically that was uh, Minli University. And at the same time, uh, as a, let's say, teenager, right? As an 80 year old boy, uh, I really wanted to, let's say, be a hand to my father. That was, uh, let's say, the only person, right? That was contributing or that was, let's say, providing my family, right? I was really, uh, let's say, uh, into it. So that's why I, uh started to seek jobs right uh, and at that time uh, let's say fortunately right 
Uh, I have heard that Everest Education Center was, let's say, uh, making a recruitment campaign, right? So basically, my friend uh, who was working at that time at Everest already, uh, let's say, had let me know about it, right? So uh, then I, let's say, I kind of applied for the job, right? I mean, we had an interview with the uh, head of uh, Everest. So, and basically, I was offered a job right and because of my job um to be honest i have dropped out of my university i mean dropped out of Milley university um and decided to work for a year right uh, as a let's say full-time teacher so everything was kind of uh, you know uh, unexpected right nice that's interesting and some yeah. people like think that to get eight or above in IELTS, you gotta be genius. But is that actually true? What do you think? Um, well, that's a nice question, actually. Right. Well, I mean, I think this is a common mis I mean, misperception, right? That people hold. Um, in order, let's say, to get an eight or above, I don't really think that a person or let's say that a candidate should be you know a prodigy right a prodigy i mean uh the candidate can easily secure that aid uh given the fact that he has a good command of the language right and he knows let's say uh those so-called tricks and let's say myth right i mean uh, some uh, you know shortcuts on how to get that let's say eight, right? But when it comes to, let's say nine, I think people really have to uh, make sure that they have a, let's say, good grasp of uh, all subjects, right? Because in, let's say in writing, right? In TASTU, uh, basically people are asked different kinds of topics, right? So uh, in order to write well, right? In order to, let's say, show off your grammar and vocabulary, you really have to be let's say, good at a lot of subjects, right? Yeah. And the same applies to speaking because in, let's say, part two or in part three, right? Uh, you are asked, um, let's say, situation that you might have never had in your entire life, right? But uh, in reality, you have to speak something, right? I mean, you have to come up with, uh, let's say, proper lie, right? So in order to be able to lie, I mean, to to lie, let's say, properly, right? You really have to, uh, let's say, have exposed yourself to, let's say, different kinds of, um, let's say, podcasts, right? Or let's say you have, uh, you should really read a lot of books, right? Or articles, at least, right? So, I mean, uh, general English is needed, but it's not the, let's say, um, kind of the only thing that people need, right? I mean, people can simply get seven without uh, great general English, right? Um, but for a higher score, I think you, you should really have to, yeah, uh, you know, uh, have to have those, right? And what do you think? Uh, what would be your advice for someone who's learned English and they want to pre start preparing for IELTS? What would be your advice? for those type of people, for each section, as someone who got 8.5 overall, which is amazing? Um, well, um, to start, I think uh, they, uh, they should better focus on their general English. That is, uh, that is not only grammar and vocabulary, right? That is uh, actually knowing a lot of things, right? in English and that's kind of let's say um, a mini version of a scholar for example right or a mini version of a scientist let's say right uh, and then because I mean listening and reading when it comes to listening and reading in the IELTS context right uh, well there are some uh, let's say certain types of question types right so basically there are some strategies to, let's say, ace those question types, right? So if a candidate has a great command of the language, right? If the, if the candidate has a great general English, I don't really think that, let's say, learning uh, some tricks uh, in listening and reading, let's say, won't be any kind of problem, right? 
Uh, so, uh, and when it comes to writing and speaking, in order to improve your writing, uh, from my own experience, um, I think candidates should better analyze essays. I mean, after, uh, you know, securing a good general English, they should uh, focus on analyzing sample essays that are, let's say, written by our local miners, right? Our Uzbek miners, there, there are uh, literally uh, 20, or I mean, more than 20 miners, right? So they are a good source instead of, let's say, uh, uh, reading Simon's essays. I mean, Simon's essays are great, great, yeah. But, uh, you know, time passes, right? So as time passes, things change, right? So uh, basically, Simon's strategies, let's say, might have suited 10 years ago, right? But they uh, may not suit now. So that's why just go and get our Niners essays, right? They basically post uh, almost, let's say, every day, right? Essays almost every day on the Telegram channel. So just go and read them and analyze them, right? I mean, when you are reading the sample essays, be it a task one or task two, uh, make sure that you, uh, you feel yourself like an examiner. Uh, analyze the let's say report or essay according to the you know uh else writing assessment criteria that is task response coherence and cohesion grammatical range and accuracy and the last one lexical resort right so uh to the task response part write what the idea right uh, i mean the ideas of the author right and how they have been let's say supported by examples right uh, and is the, let's say, the position of the author is clear or not? And uh, why? For example, if it's clear, why? Write it down. Yeah, that's going to be a lot of hard work. That's going to be too demanding, right? But it pays off, believe me. Because I did the same uh, in the pre assignment So, and when it comes to CC, let's, uh, let's imagine, um, enumerate the, or uh, make the list of the cohesive devices. I mean, linking words the author used, right? In order to make the essay, let's say, more logical, organized, right? Or, and to link, right? The ideas, for example. And then when it comes to grammatical range and accuracy, well, write everything, every single detail, uh, right? For example, uh, models, right? So, uh, the author may use models, can, may, might, right, could, would, should, a lot, right, must, have to, and uh, pay attention to the, let's say, use, I mean, pay attention to the uh, place that they have been used, uh, whether they are correct or not, right, and why, why this model not, let's say, why can, not must, right, or why could, uh, in the probability, well, if the author uses could, Right. So uh, basically, that means that the author th uh, thinks that something, uh, I mean, the probability of something happening in the future is lower. Right. Uh, when the author uses can, well, the probability naturally is higher. So this sort of stuff. Right. And when it comes to lexical resource, that are, let's say, a lot of vocabulary that you can use, right? They can, that you can find useful. And for me personally, let's say, uh, making a vocabulary list uh, by reading samples is by far the, let's say, uh, most eff effective ways of um, building up your vocabulary. I mean, uh, instead of, let's say, taking any kind of dictionary books, right? And then writing uh, writing all the words down and then kind of translating them down, right? Or reading, after reading articles, writing all the, let's say, translating all the words, right? But uh, let's say you've done so, but you are unable to use them, but you can't understand their, let's say, uh, place, right? You, you can't use them, right? So, uh, which means, uh, well, they are useful. I mean, articles, right? They are useful uh, to, let's say, pro uh, receptive skills, right? So basically, when you see that word, you know what does it mean, right? I mean, what it means, right? But you can't use, right, it on your own. Uh, that is productive skills, right? So basically, when you read essays, you understand the concept that the vocabulary. I mean, that that uh, word that you have, let's say. Uh, found right is used right how to use properly and stuff like that 
So basically, if you do everything like the examiners do, I mean, there is, let's say, no way in succeeding uh, in the writing context, right? I mean, writing aspect, not context. But when it comes to speaking, uh, when it comes to speaking, I think uh, the best way, probably the best way to improve your speaking is just, you know, speaking. I mean, uh, casual speaking, right? Uh, make sure you are able to hold conversations in any topics, right? In any, let's say, uh, uh, let's say, day-to-day -day topics, right? So if you are, if you reach to that level, I don't think that you will find, let's say, those 50 topics in IELTS hard to difficult, right? So uh, you can simply ace them. I mean, you don't really have to, let's say, um, learn everything by heart, right? And try to kind of pretend to be telling something naturally, right? But but that's not going to sound naturally. So basically, uh, for speaking, well, you can do shadowing as well in order to improve your pronunciation, right? But uh, sh well, shadowing is great, but it's sometimes overrated. But casual speaking is the, you know, most important one to improve your speaking. Yeah, that's interesting. Like a lot of helpful uh, information. So looking back at your journey, you, you took the IELTS exam seven times. And what did you learn from each attempt that helped you to improve your score? Um, well, well, great. Um, I think that I've learned, let's say, various things, right? Uh, and the most let's say a uh, pivotal one among them, I guess is uh, being, uh, you know, mentally ready for the exam is among them, right? I mean, uh, the IELTS exam, right? I mean, not only the IELTS exam, but any kind of exams, right? Any kind of testing systems uh, do not only, let's say, require the candidate, um, let's say, knowledge, right? But it also requires uh, mentality, I mean, mental stability in order to show your full potential, right? So if you are, let's say, emotional, too emotional person, right? And you, let's say, experience uh, some sorts of trauma, right? Uh, during the exam, you are highly unlikely to, let's say, success, right? To succeed in your uh, exam, right? Or let's say to pass your exam with flying colors, right? So, uh, I have learned this skill uh, by, let's say, taking the exam seven times so far, especially my, you know, scores were, uh, let's say, fluctuating all the time. I mean, my first attempt was seven, then the second one was 7.5, and then the third, seven again, right? After, let's say, getting 7.5, and then I got eight, right? And interestingly enough, after getting eight, I got a seven again, and then I got my eight back and then 8.5. So basically I learned this skill very much. Yeah. So you work as an IELTS instructor in FRS, right? Yes. Uh, can you talk about your career? What aspects of your job do you like the most and how many students you've taught so far? Um, uh, well, I think I don't know the exact number um, of my students so far. Well, let's say it is around 500, I guess. I guess. Uh, but frankly speaking, I don't know the exact number. Right? And in, coming to the interesting aspects of my job, well, uh, the team is great. The atmosphere here is great. I mean, everyone is helpful. Uh, I, I clearly remember the time of my, let's say, uh, first lessons, right? My uh, the beginning of my career as an IELTS teacher. I mean, as an English and IELTS instructor. Uh, 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 basically, even uh, you know, that's very helpful, right? When I ask let's say, them for help, they immediately, let's say, um, gave their advice, right? 
uh, they sometimes even, let's say, invited me to their lessons. I was, let's say, honored to have participated in some of their lessons, right? Uh, and I learned a lot of things, right? I mean, there is no, uh, let's say, um, kind of, you know, um, ego, I guess, right? Uh, among uh, fellow instructors, uh, they don't, you know, uh, hide something, right? They are open. They can share, let's say, um, as much as they know, right? Uh, but if you ask, right? So th that that's the, let's say, uh, most blessing that I've been blessed right here. Yeah, that's amazing. So uh, going back to uh, IELTS preparation, like in the listening section, some people struggle with focus and attention. So what do you suggest them to do to prevent that problem? Um, well, just simply um, get rid of, let's say, watching Instagram Reels and YouTube Shorts or, you know, uh, those 30-second uh, uh, TikTok videos. They are actually, you know, devastating your uh, attention span, right? They are actually driving uh, you, for example, right? I mean, not you, uh, but if someone is listening to this, right, and let's say does so, right? I mean, uh, those videos are simply driving you into, uh, let's say, into an emptiness, right? Into a loneliness that your attention span, you know, shortens, right? And you will become, let's say, um, um, a loser, let's say, right? I mean, you will be unable to uh, focus on, let's say, subject matters, right? Not only in the IELTS context, right? Or not only in the listening uh, sphere, right? In general, even in your lives, right? Uh, outside of the IELTS context, for example, your university, right? Or your school lessons, right? Uh, or whatever you gradually become, let's say, a degraded person, right? Uh, in other words, loser. So in order to, let's say, uh, improve your performance in listening, just get rid of those you know, trash videos. Uh, I'm sorry if I have sounded right. And, um, and then, Try to, let's say, uh, listen podcasts at least uh, 30 minutes a day. That is basically equal to the, let's say, full IELTS listening, right? And while you are doing so, please make sure that you take notes, right? It's like uh, sitting in the lecture at the, at the university, right? And taking notes, right? When the necessary information has been told by the, you know, uh, lecturer, right? So basically, and then... Uh, you can do dictation as well, right? Let's say, uh, imagine you've done a practice test, right? And you got, let's say, 28 out of 40, right? That is 6.5, right? So uh, go and do, uh, uh, let's say, go and do uh, dictation. I mean, write everything down in those 12 uh, questions, right? That you have made mistake, mistakes, right? And then um, go to the tape scripts and then compare your, let's say, uh, work with the tape script, right? And then uh, let's say assess it, right? Or make corrections when needed, right? Uh, so basically dictation and note taking, right? Uh, are the, let's say two uh, pillars, right? That uh, help you to say, yeah, amazing. So regarding the reading section, uh, I see a lot of like people struggling with the timing. Uh, some of them may not even finish the reading test on time. So what would be your advice for those type of people? Um, well, uh, first of all, please uh, make sure that you read an article every day. And when you read an article, please uh, read at least five times. And that is basically when you read the article for the first time, uh, you are highly uh, unlikely to understand everything, right? So basically, uh, you 
which means you have to read it twice, right? And while you are uh, reading it the second time, uh, use vocabulary. Yeah, that, that's okay. Use vocabulary, right? Because th they might be, let's say, too academic or too specific words. So use the vocabulary, right? Your, I mean, use your dictionary. And then read it uh, again three times. And then uh, write a short summary of, let's say, what you have understood, right, from that article. And then after, let's say, some period of time, let it be an hour or two, right? Um, just retell it. I mean, record your voice, right, and retell what you have understood, right? Uh, that is actually helpful not only for reading but to for writing and speaking at the same time and then um apart from reading articles you can uh, you you know analyze um practice tests right uh, as i have told uh, in the listening part right i mean uh, let's imagine you've done a reading set right a reading practice test let's say you found 25 correct answers right so uh, go and analyze so uh let's continue uh in your opinion what do you think what are the biggest challenges like students face when it comes to the speaking portion of the ielts i mean you've taught so many students and what are some of the biggest challenges that students have well probably the biggest one is fear fear of speaking fear of let's say making mistakes right when they speak and i think uh when they overcome this let's say um this stuff i think uh, they they'll find speaking quite you know fascinating because let's say in uzbek they love to speak right so uh because they don't do any kind of mistakes right as it is their native language right so uh, in order to, let's say, be able to, um, let's say, speak properly, right? Just try to speak a lot, try to speak in English. Well, that's okay if you do mistakes, that's okay. Uh, as far as you are a beginner, let's say, right? Or as far as you have recently started, let's say, practicing your uh, speaking skills, well, that's, that's okay to make mistakes, right? Because no one is perfect, right? So everybody does mistakes, so that, that's great. So try to... Uh, speak more and try to let's say um, uh, making let's say uh, less and less mistakes right every time you uh, practice your speaking right and you'll gradually get to that point uh, let's say of your uh, perfection right so basically uh, I, I tended to I mean I used to have a student right so there was a girl uh, who was really afraid of speaking, right? Uh, in my elementary level group, uh, if I'm not mistaken. And she, she always, let's say, kept saying that she can't, right? She can't speak, right? So, and stuff like that, right? I mean, basically, she was afraid of speaking, right? And she was afraid of not speaking, but she was afraid of making mistakes, right? And uh, she kind of thought that I would be, let's say, um, you know, correcting her, right? Correcting her mistakes all the time and stuff like that. But and as soon as she overcame her fear, right? She, uh, you know, uh, frequently started to ask me, let's say, to have uh, speaking sessions, right? After, let's say, as soon as I finish, um, you know, uh, explaining, uh, let's say, grammatical theme, right? She tended to ask, teacher, please, uh, let's do some speaking, right? Uh, I, I think it is quite great. I have uh, now understood it, let's say, taste and stuff like that. So basically, fear is their, you know, biggest enemy. Yeah, that's awesome to know it. So um, some people struggle with motivation to study for IELTS or maybe they're they might be lazy and uh, what do you suggest for those type of people they really want to get a high score in IELTS but studying for it is not really appealing to them so what would be your advice for them um well a great question um well when it comes to motivation right I mean lack of motivation so if you are let's say suffering from um uh, let's say um, lack of motivation right uh, just go and talk with your parents i mean you don't really have to talk with them just go and look at them right look at the 
gray, right, in their hair, and look at the let's say wrinkles, right, on their face, right, and look at their let's say uh, overall appearance, right. They they seem, I mean, they seem to have aged, right, and consider the amount of money they have been investing in your education, right. Um, from the very beginning of your life, right? And but you are here, let's say, just lying on the sofa, right? And basically yammering that you can, right? Or uh, you are unable to do some sort of stuff, right? I mean, you, yammering that you don't want to study, right? You don't want to, let's say, do your homework, right? So please stop that shit. Um, I mean, yeah, I might. Um, you know, sent a result of his student that was 6.5. Well, uh, you might, let's say, think that it's not, you know, uh, a score to, let's say, boast, right? Or to be proud of, right? But, you know, the that score belonged to a, you know, young lady uh, who was blind, right? And took the test in the Braille system. And that is, uh, you know, special systematized, uh, let's say, writing system, right? I mean, there are tons of sources, right? That tons of books, lots of teachers, right? Basically, both in the online and offline community, right? Uh, but when it comes to that girl, right? Uh, there is very limited, let's say, access to the books, right? I mean, uh, in Uzbekistan itself, it is really hard to find a proper place that can, let's say, produce a book in the Braille system. I mean, there there should be one, if I'm not mistaken, and that is in Samarkand, right? So basically just printing a small book, that, let's say ELS, right? That most uh, students do for their reading, right? Uh, let's consider this book. In, in the case of this book, uh, to, let's say, produce all the book right the entire book in the braille system you should pay around five hundred uh, thousand cents right can you imagine that right but basically you have your hand you have your eye right that is let's say that can see right you have your ear that can hear right so you have your mouth right that you can speak right so basically there is no let's say excuse for you uh, to not study, right? And you have your parents who are relying on you, right? You have your parents who are, let's say, waiting for your success for years, right? And you are here just lying and crying like, let's say, if you are a boy, let's say you're crying like a sissy, right? And that, that That's basically, you know, a boy who behaves like a girl. Stop, stop that, bro, please. Or uh, let's say, if you are my sister, right, for example. Please stop that and go and do your homework. Uh, let's say study harder, right? Push yourself. So don't wait someone, let's say, I mean, don't uh, wait anyone to come to you, right? And give motivation, right? So no one's going to do that, right? Because everyone in the life, let's say, is, uh, you know, living for their own sake, right? So basically, um, the only, let's say, people that can really help are your parents, let's say, are your family members, right? And your close friends, right? Not your casual acquaintances, right? So basically, stop that, let's say, motivation seeking, right? And try to learn, motivate yourself, right? Let's say, if I don't do that, I won't let's say, get this, right? Or if I don't do that, my parents, let's say, uh, won't be proud of me, right? Or I will let my parents down, right? So basically letting your parents down, right? Letting your teachers, your family down should be the worst, let's say, nightmare, right? Or it should be the worst thing that you might experience in your life, in your entire life till your death, right? So keep, please, keep this always in your mind, right? And go ahead and that's it. yeah it's been enormously helpful and thank you